I guess it's time for this giant thermal tech case to be reviewed, but first, a message from our sponsor. Introducing the new OCZ VX500 solid state drives from Toshiba. It offers great, well balanced speeds built with MLC NAND flash for superior endurance and is also backed by a 5 year advanced warranty program. Learn more about the VX500 at OCZ.com. Alright, people, it's time to tackle the biggest case we've ever received the Thermaltake Core W200, priced at $459. This is a super tower for committed enthusiasts. It's both intimidating and exciting at the same time on the full potential of what's possible inside of it. And just so we're clear on the size, I was able to fit on one side of the case. We had an S340 from NZXT, inside of which I had the Sentry ITX. It's a little bit of a matryoshka case. And here is me next to it. It's occupying half my office. I need it to be gone. And it's not just a case, but a room for rent. All right, so now to address the big elephant in the room, not the case, but its similarities with case labs, as they now both share the double wide case category. And I gotta say that I hear that argument and I completely sort of see why people would get upset, but it's not all about just a simple end product as the experience between building in something like this versus something that the case lab produces is totally different. We have uh, reviewed the Mercury case from Case Labs, and that was a fantastic experience. So let's see if the cheaper version of the W200 here, uh, how does that reflect in the user experience and not just uh, as a simple metal box. Think bigger picture and why some people might gravitate towards something like this versus something uh, that the case labs produce. Everything here, for example, is steel versus case labs built with aluminum, which is a much better material for larger pieces. So there isn't as much bending. And ultimately for the end user, you have more options to choose from if you're going for the super tower type of build. Uh, and you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So the parts list is actually quite low for something of this size. The main frame is a few large pieces, all of which arrived in perfect condition. No bends here. For storage, there are five drive cages with two caddies in each, plus four more caddies to install in a separate location. All of the bits and pieces and screws are very well labeled corresponding to what you need to use in the manual. And an empty toolbox is present for your convenience. And the only surprise were these gross oil stains on one of the plastic bags, really not Cool. So the most part, the instructions manual is clear. You have 32 pages for constructing the W200, which took me about four hours to complete. And I've only made one mistake as the perspective on one of the pages in the images in the manual was very confusing. But in the end, I was able to put everything together and put the exterior panels on and the case was complete. I like the ability to remove any of the panels for transportation purposes, so it's not as heavy. And all the ventilated areas have dust filtration at the front, at the top, on the bottom, and on the side. And that's highly appreciated for what this case is designed for. And all the ventilation areas have the small square format, which looks pretty nice. Now, given such large thin metal sheets, of course, it's quite flexible. You can see it here. The frame is solid toe, which is important. Uh, and the same thing we see on the window side panel, despite the acrylic being so thick. The secure mechanism is not future proof, uh, in my opinion. It's a simple hole insert that isn't very strong. And because the side panels can curve, one of the joints on my case already isn't sticking. So as you can see, the Core W200 is basically two giant full towers merged together with 10 PCI slots per side, with the right side having an inverted motherboard layout and a power supply installation at the bottom of each section. The front intake is divided, so the left side is only for five and a quarter inch drive accessories. 
uh, with two front IOs included, as the case is designed for dual systems. You can install drive cages here, although it's facing the main internals and not really ideal for cable management, while a rotated drive cage system can be installed, but it's so uncomfortable. You have to remove the entire bottom uh, piece to install the main rails. And even then you're sort of left with a challenge on how to properly connect your drives that look clean. The left side can also support a 360 millimeter radiator, thanks to those flexible brackets, while the right side is for fans only. You got four spots for 120 or 140 millimeter mounts. The right side does not support radiators since the fans are placed too far away from each other. And the same applies to the bottom because of the spacing between the fans, it's not standard and you can only fit a 280 millimeter radiator on each side. Behind the main window panel, we find half of the interior with appropriate mounting locations for those crazy large motherboards. There are many rubber grommets and you don't really realize just how large this space is until a full-size ATX motherboard is completely lost in this space. So this technically would be my second water cooling build uh, and I'm a little bit intimidated, I gotta be honest. You know, I've just populated the motherboard, which looks absolutely tiny, and I've uh, figured out a new game, what's called Find the Mobile, inside this ginormous case, and I'm already finding a little bit of difficulties on what to do with that space. For example, I have the power supply on the other side, so the motherboard looks nice and clean, but then it looks a little bit ridiculous, right? If you're not populating anything here with the water cooling hardware, and this is where my inexperience comes into play. For example, I have the Thermotank uh, reservoir pump combo. This is the silent edition and I really imagined it, you know, sitting somewhere here occupying this dead space uh, beside the motherboard, but the fact that you have a no uh, mandatory uh, reservoir mountings on this side is a little bit ridiculous. No compatibility with your own water cooling hardware in a water cooling made case by the same company. Now moving on to the rest of the hardware, the radiator stuff, I have a 360 radiator here and just for scale comparison, like you still have so much room uh, beside the motherboard if you were to install it at the top, the same idea, if you want to install it at the bottom, the same thing. And I find it a little bit difficult to, as a case reviewer, to approach how to you know, go about the system because regardless of how much hardware I put in this system, if I'm not doing dual builds, it's a little bit of a wasted potential. So it feels like foreign territory for me and I'm gonna try it to do my best to showcase what this case is capable of. And so checking out the second half of the interior, it looks identical since both sides share the middle wall and therefore if you're routing cables on both sides, it might be a challenge. However, the motherboard tray on this side is removable, which is awesome with some space behind it and where you can route the cables for a cleaner look. I kind of wish that the main half had a removable tray instead of it being on this chamber, but probably the best cooling feature on this case are the radiator brackets that support four fans, 120 or 140 millimeter, with 480, 560, and an even 600 millimeter radiator supporting per bracket. In particular, I find the mounting mechanism to be awesome. It's toolless for that initial insert that can be secured later with a thumb screw, and two of these can fit on the right side and two more at the top, giving you a lot of area for airflow or radiators, which is why those uh, dust filters are important. And this is one of the reasons why the top section is completely open, as the bracket can also be installed in the center. Perhaps if your dual system are sharing the top radiator, so there are a lot of options that accommodate for any scenario, although I still don't understand why the front side on the right uh, doesn't have standard spacing between those fan mounts, and therefore no radiator can fit there. Now the assembly process is kind of hot and cold at the same time. I like the included standoff tool, but with no middle standoff that catches the motherboard, so you need to flip the case, and this is where you need to make sure or make up your mind on where you'll have the PC, since it will become incredibly heavy to move once the system is installed. Wheels are provided tow so you can uh, roll it into position. And so the basic overview of the Core W200 is finished. Let's take a break and hear a word from our sponsor. Assembling your VertiGear gaming chair just got a whole lot easier with a simple insert mechanism of the back seat onto the side rails so you mount the side screws much faster. A true one-man job. Assembly made easy by VertiGear. And what is left to do now is the actual water cooling build. It is how you get to learn a computer case after all, but so far, 
I gotta be honest, I am not convinced. Water cooling is a lot of maintenance, a lot of planning, uh, and especially when dealing with something of this size and this caliber, you have to be full in. So I hope you guys enjoyed part one. Part two is coming soon with the full build and the complete analysis of the entire experience with the water cooling assembly and etc. Little things that I will pick up along the way as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe for part two. We'll see you next video.